Well, you will slip. Yep. What is for, uh, monitoring the the we use Ames Web. Oh, sure. Yep. And there's also something called Dibbles, D I B E L S. Um, so, fluency. So, you know, we do all this direct instruction, getting the kids to become fluent readers, but we can't stop with the direct instruction. Vocabulary is so key because if you don't know the words within a say if you if you become a fluent reader but don't know the meanings of words within the passage, are you going to comprehend? No, can't do. So we have to teach vocabulary as well. We have to be very explicit and systematic with vocabulary. And <coughs> we also can up the ante with kids and become you know when I approach all of these stages and, and strands of reading with kids. I tell them, you, be, you are becoming linguists. You're becoming word scientists. Okay? And we can up it into vocabulary and start to work with morphology. And morphology is the study of word parts and their meanings. And morphology will help kids with vocabulary. It will also help them become better readers because they'll start to chunk words based on roots and affixes, prefixes and suffixes. Uh, and it will help their spelling as well. And that's something we can teach very directly and explicitly. And uh, about 15 years ago or so, I, I wrote a, a workbook on uh, morphology on roots that kids can use in the classroom. And I uh, unabashedly make a plug for that, too. <laughs> OK, morphology is uh, actually not to buy. I have a copy downstairs. You're free to make copies of that uh, for free. Um, so good, so I talked about morphology. So comprehension, now this, we, we know, um, again, scientifically, from a research standpoint, how to teach kids to become, so they can get fluent, okay? We can teach them really good vocabulary strategies. Comprehension is a really, a much more difficult thing uh, to teach, but we need, we need to stay at it. And when we look at comprehension, we look at different strands. We look at main idea strands. We look at detail, cause and effect, inferential and interpretive. And we, again, we have to be very systematic in drawing out um, these ideas to the kids and, and teaching these, these strands. Uh, and it gets, what we see with a lot of kids who don't have the vocabulary, they don't have the background knowledge. So if you teach, them to become fluent and they're fluent readers, um, but they don't have um, a background, uh, you know, a simple science background in, in, in how plants grow and the, you know, the physiology behind that. Uh, it becomes very hard for them, and even in fourth grade, to read a science textbook um, that talks about photosynthesis because they don't have the background. So, as teachers, we have to provide that background knowledge to them before. There are a lot of pre-reading strategies that we need to go through to help kids with that. And then we have to look at different um, story grammars, paragraph structure. There's a great technique uh, for reading comprehension called re reciprocal reading and text mapping. And, and these are all different um, comprehension strategies. Okay, now we're going to shift to um, to trying to apply some of what we talked about tonight to some of these spelling errors. Now, that's not jelly, but it was actually chili. And what's going on there? Yeah, the, the J and the CH are pronounced in the same place in the mouth. The ch, ch. The only difference between ch and j. What's the difference? Ch, ch. Ones, what ones we call voiced, the j is a voiced, and the ch is unvoiced. And so kids make a lot of errors around that. Their, their, their spelling errors are often around points of articulation in the mouth, and, and it's often where they make the error. The pronunciation is in the same place in the mouth, but the difference, the distinguishing feature, is voiced versus voiceless. Garage for garage, same thing, right? Same same thing. 
and spent for spent. D again, b p. The, the distinguishing feature between them is voiced and voiceless. So all of these errors are voice and voiceless errors, except for obviously the um, s the chili, the e eh and the i eh in chili. So John, can I ask, is that could that be an auditory processing piece, and do you guys, I would assume, assess for that of what the voice you hear in your head, you know, for the sound? Yeah, we we do want to look at the. A lot of kids who, who are poor readers do have difficulty with auditory processing, so we do want to look at that as well. But yeah, from the point is, can the, can the child distinguish the difference in the sound between ch and ch? Because it's not a hearing problem, it's, it's, it's a process. It's a, proce it's a processing yeah. issue. And this, we see a lot of errors with uh, ends, with, and we call that a nasal because um, when you make the sound, mm, it actually comes, it's going through the nose. So kids make a lot of nasal issues, uh, leaving out nasals. And you know, we want to see error patterns. So typically, we'll see a child who does this, does this a lot. So we have to be extra explicit with him when we're giving him the word to spell. This is another, these errors we call liquids. R's and L's are liquids because you can make them a continuous sound. L can go on as long as you can hold it. Same with er. And kids, a lot of kids, young kids, have difficulty pronouncing L's and R's, right? You hear that mixed up a lot, with the Elmer Fudds, right? Yeah. So, you know, they, their errors are apparent in spelling as well. Okay, what, what was this child trying to spell? Yeah, you guys are good. What's going on? What, yeah, what's the TR? How do you make the TR sound? Do you say t, t rain? How do you pronounce it? Ch every single time. Every single T time that T and R come together in that pattern, it always, 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 always will make the ch sound. So how do you teach that? Go back to the go back to the sound level. Go back, get that mirror out, and show the child what's happening in his mouth. Have him make the t sound. So he sees t t t, and then have him make the r sound, er er er. And then have him make the tr together. And he won't go t. It's natural way your mouth does it would be ch. So you show them what's happening with the mouth, and then. We get a long list of TR words, and we show them, we read them together, and every single time we say, see, what happened? It's ch, isn't it? It's always ch. So next time you hear ch, and you're spelling it, think, is that next sound an er? Because if it's an er, it's going to be a T. And there's just lots and lots and lots of practice that we need to do with that. And then once it's there, though, it's there. But I'm just showing you two different combination, letter combinations that have this unique, there are lots of letter combinations that kids have to learn that affect one another, these co-articulation issues. Well, this, this might be a problem, okay. Okay, what's, what's this guy make, what error is this? Yeah, every single time I put, that's great. Every time I put this up, what do you think the audience says? Grass, every single time. So we, we've had a very good, we've had a very good uh, teaching session here because you're, you're spot on. You're, you're making me go too fast now because I'd spend 10 minutes going. And <laughs> okay, so what's, uh, Good reading instruction, again, it's direct and explicit, it's sequential and systematic, it's multi-sensory, that is, there's a visual piece, there's an auditory piece, and, and, and if you're really good, there's a movement piece, and there's a developmentally appropriate meta aspect. What I mean by meta is getting the child to step back and see reading as a scientific process. And, you know, obviously, a seven-year-old kid, you're not going to be able to do that 
like you could with a 12-year-old kid. And this is really launching onto my soapbox now that what's really amazing, there's such resistance, and there has been for years and years and years in higher education, in departments of education around reading, that whole language is still really deeply entrenched um, in, in higher ed. And it, it, it